Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to build some spaceship wreckage. I'm not gonna lie, this project was a bit of a rush job. I was trying to get these terrain nodes done in time for a game, which we ended up not having enough time to film anyway. I'm only mentioning that because I didn't allow for proper drying time almost every step of the way with this project, and it's going to be mentioned a lot. After a good bit of tinkering and puzzling plastic pieces together, I had enough spaceship pieces to move on. So this plastic is pretty flimsy. If you watched my abandoned factory build video, you might remember that I used tacky glue and sand on the underside of one of the plastic containers to strengthen it up, and I thought that worked pretty well. I wanted to see if it would work just as well if I thinned down the glue. This ended up being a failed experiment. It definitely did not work as well as it did the last time. If I had a few days to let this dry and add more layers, it would have been fine. But like I said before, I was on a bit of a time crunch here, so I just pushed the project forward and started gluing the pieces down to their respective hardboard bases. To build up dirt piles around the wreckage, I used a mixture of sculpt mold and way too much scrap foam bits. For projects like this, I think sculpt mold works pretty well. It added a lot of support to the wreckage pieces. That's it, boy. Get in there nice and deep. With the wreckage mostly secured, I added some details to each node, some EVA foam paneling to break up the plastic containers. I stamped on some rivets with a nail punch and uh, hot glued them on. This is one of those little tabs from a milk carton. I cut the ring off of it and glued it into a plastic bottle cap. I also added some exposed wiring and conduits with actual electrical wiring and straws and a cardboard tube. You'll see me drenching those parts in Gorilla Glue. This Gorilla Glue doesn't really glob up. It sinks down into the recessed areas and then dries clear. So I was pretty much just cramming pieces of scrap foam and wires into all of these recessed areas and then just drizzling Gorilla Glue onto them to seal everything in. If you have any good ideas for easily bendable wiring, let me know in the comments. I definitely need some more wire options.
So this is supposed to be the front end of a ship, which skidded to a stop, pushing up the earth. For this top panel and the panels on the side, I reverted to my original tacky glue and sand method. But once again, I did not let them fully dry. So as I was working on the project, the mixture slowly started to ooze out. You win again, gravity. and it looks like a face. Maybe if I cover up these eyes. Perfect. I definitely would have liked to spend more time on the detailing on this thing. I think hitting it with a heat gun would have been really cool, make it look a little more warped and damaged. I am pretty happy with how the ripped up hole on the underside turned out though. I glued a few strips of ripped cardboard onto the underside and then just globbed construction adhesive and foam bits onto it. For the base coat, I mixed up a noxious leather dye slurry. Finally, this bottle is empty. Only one more liter of black dye to go. You'll notice how I'm not adding Mod Podge to this like I usually do. That's because these terrain nodes are not even close to dry at this point, and Mod Podge would seal that moisture in, and we do not want that. The painting process was pretty basic. Yeah, basic. Again, I didn't add any Mod Podge to these layers. I started with a dark brown, getting full coverage. I sprinkled a bit of sand onto that to add some texture. Then I started testing out colors. I ended up going with a deep blue and gold for the main colors of the ship. Then I dry brushed a couple different shades of brown onto the pushed up earth. And at this point I applied a black wash, which I think was probably a mistake. I think it ended up making the nodes way too dark. After letting them fully dry, which uh, took about two days, I applied several coats of spray varnish and that really darkened them up. So I ended up just repainting them, only this time I did add some Mod Podge to each layer of paint. I also left a few areas black and dry brushed white on top of that to make them look more charred and ashy. 
And here's what they ended up looking like. This ended up being a pretty great project for recycling plastic bottles and containers. I think it fits in pretty well with my post-apocalyptic terrain sets. I kind of wish I would have just done like two or three nodes instead of six. I definitely feel like I was sacrificing quality for speed with this one, and I'm not really okay with that, so I might revisit this in the future. If you're still watching this, I've been going through a lot of growing pains as a content creator recently and I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm working on it. There are a lot of things on the back end that have been eating up a lot of my time, mainly building new skills. Also I've been thinking a lot about the content structure of this channel and how I want to proceed as a creator. My vision was for this to be a variety channel with a primary focus on terrain videos, and I know I've kind of strayed away from that a bit recently, so I just wanted to say that I appreciate your support, and uh, just bear with me as I figure things out I guess. As always, thanks for watching the video, I hope you have a good day and I will see you later.